So until now, the Zowie S1 and S2 mice have only been available in the Davina series, so that means either blue or pink and gloss coating. And despite people raving about the shape and the mouse making numerous people's top lists, that color and coating was enough to keep a lot of people from pulling the trigger. But Zowie heard you, and very soon the S1 and the S2 are going to both be available in that classic matte black finish. Let's check them out. You ready? Let's go. Yo, I'm Brian P, you're watching Bad Seed Tech, and today we're taking a look at the black S1 and S2 mice from Zowie. For transparency, both these mice were sent out by Addis Inc, but as you should know by now, doesn't affect my review in any way. Now, if you've already watched a ton of content about the Davina S1 and S2, let me save you some time. These are the exact same mice, except the new model is in the classic matte finish, black color, black buttons, black cable. Okay, bye, leave a like on your way out. See you in the next one. So both the S1A and the S2 in the new finish still retail for $69.99. They're in ambi shape, but they're not true ambidextrous because they don't have side buttons on the right-hand side of the mouse. So this is gonna be right-hand use only. I will talk about an alternative towards the end of the video if you're a lefty. The only difference between the S1 and the S2 is size, with the S2 being considered a small mouse and the S1 being considered a medium size. The S1 is gonna measure 126 millimeters long, 61 millimeters wide, and 39 millimeters high. It comes in at about 90 grams on my scale. The smaller S2 is gonna measure 122 millimeters long, 58 millimeters wide and 38 millimeters high and weighs about 86 grams. With a hand measurement of 20.5 centimeters palm to fingertip and a measurement of 10.5 centimeters across, the S1 fits me perfectly. Normally in a palm grip, but I can move into a claw easily with this mouse, which I have a natural tendency to do when things get serious in game. The S2 is really close in size to a G Pro wireless, which unfortunately is a little bit small for me. Triggers here are very good. Hawano switches here as well. They don't feel overly heavy though, like the FK. These are really light and crisp. The thumb buttons here are like my version of Perfect, really big shape, little to no pre-travel, crispy clicks, excellent positioning. It's a Zowie scroll wheel, so you know the deal. It's great for gaming, pretty gross for everything else. It's really tactile, 16 steps. It's black on this model and it takes a good bit of force to depress. The thing about a Zowie scroll wheel is that you're never gonna do something accidentally in game that you didn't intend to. It's like really tough to over scroll with it. But it's loud and it resonates inside the body and the haptics on it are not great for me. I don't like to use it for anything outside of gaming. The cable here is thin and rubberized and it does exit the body on an angle. It's not a paracord and it's definitely a candidate for a bungee. I generally opt to paracord all my mice, especially the ones I main and this one's no different. And look, I get that the Zowie logo is red, but I think it's a real missed opportunity here that the logo on this mouse is not gloss black like the BenQ logo on the side. Kind of like how the white Zowie logo is on the Davina mouse. That way you could have gone with some of the wilder paracord colors and it wouldn't have clashed with the red. I wound up going with this more reserved black and 3M reflective Teflon from Spectrum Designs, which I'll be installing pretty much as soon as I wrap this video. As for glides, the big Zowie stock glides are my favorite mouse glides out there and Zowie always puts an extra set in the box. You can hyperglide these for sure, but if you can't or you don't put a priority on this, I really don't feel like you're missing out on anything. I also think it depends on the mouse pad that you're using. Like when I'm on the Helios, the hyperglides feel faster but if I move over to the Amp 500, the Zowie stock feed feel faster to me and they're quieter. Underside of the mouse, you'll also find adjustment for the pulling rate, the DPI adjustment, 400, 800, 1600, and 3200, and the 3360 sensor is implemented very well here. I should mention here as well, several people have pointed out that you can also adjust the liftoff distance on this mouse on the hardware itself. That's not something I do personally, but depending on your play style or the mouse surface that you use, it may be something that you look for, so there you go. There's no software to speak of at all, it's just plug and go, and I'm always a huge fan of that. All right, let's talk coating and then we'll talk shape. This is the standard Zowie matte coating. It's nice for us that it's available, but if you've ever owned a Zowie mouse in this finish, then you know what it is. It's matte, yes, but it has a pretty unique feel and people have some pretty strong feelings about it. One thing I can objectively say about it is that it is a grease and oil magnet and it needs a lot of cleaning and upkeep if it's gonna be on camera. Beard guys, Good luck. Me personally, after having used both, if I had to pick one, I would go with the gloss. I normally keep products like unreasonably clean when I'm filming them, but I opted to leave this one alone as I handled it so you can get a real idea of what it's gonna be like sitting on your desk. Okay, shape time. I don't really wanna belabor this because there's tons of coverage out there about the shape on this mouse, but I can tell you that the S1 
Hands down my favorite mouth shape out there. It's not as low in the front as the FK series. It's not as high at the peak or the hump as the ZA series. It's about as close to perfect for me personally as I can find. The trigger area here is taller, so when I'm in a palm grip, that means my ring finger is gonna rest on the mouse body itself with less drag on the pad versus like the FK or the ZA. With my hand size, I have this issue when a mouse gets a little too low in the front where my ring finger likes to rest more on the mouse pad itself. The other aspect is that the body's a good width for me, but the overall frame is a little shorter front to back. So I have this little pocket that I've talked about before. It's basically room between the rear of the mouse and my palm so I can use my fingers for vertical correction. The ZA series is the closest thing you're gonna get to this if you're a lefty. It feels similar in the hand, not exactly the same though. The hump is very pronounced and noticeable in hand on the ZA series. The scroll wheel also protrudes out quite a bit more on the shell on the S versus the ZA. I struggle to find anything to really compare this shape to because it is so unique. People for some reason think from the pics that it's like a G403, it's not. I would like to see the S series get the special edition treatment with the white gloss, and I'd also like to see it come out in a true ambi so it's a little more accessible. As for value, the landscape is changing right now. It's gonna be interesting to see if Zowie makes any adjustments to stay competitive. At almost $70, it's not a cheap mouse, and for that shape and sensor performance, you do have to make some concessions. It's hard with the scroll wheel because I get what they're trying to do for gaming, but if you can only afford to have one mouse on your desk, using the scroll for other tasks is not great. I'm actually totally happy with the weight of the two models. No complaints there. It's a pretty good balance between speed and stability. By the looks of things, the second half of 2019 is just going to be jammed up with mice that are punched full of holes, and I think we're going to see other mouse companies really go after Zowie's shape. It's going to get interesting. We'll see how long they can continue to demand the price point that they do right now. But all critique aside, it is actually the mouse that I main every day for gaming. That says a lot because I'm not short on options, but for my money, I'd still do the gloss coating and the Davina color scheme. After having got used to a little pop of color on my desk for so long, it feels kind of weird to be without it. No affiliate links on this one. You're not going to find it on like Amazon yet. I don't even think it's on Addis Inc yet. I think there's a pre-order link on BenQ Direct. Those aren't slated to ship until like the 23rd of June. So like early July, you'll probably see stock in some other areas and I'll update the links then. As always, any questions about anything I covered in today's video, just hit me up in the comments or better yet, drop by the Discord and we'll try to get you fixed up. And that's it for this time. I'm Brian P. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button, hit that sub button, and until next time, stay up.